Hi Year 10, welcome to your first video tutorial for childcare. Um, in the lesson today I'm going to be looking at the impact of personal and external factors on development. So recently we've been looking in particular um, at holistic development which is looking at all of the areas of development within children. Um, that includes physical development, intellectual development, emotional development, social development and language development as well. When we group all of those areas of development together, we call them holistic development. And what it's also important to note is that different areas of development can have an impact on one another as well. If we take the example of a child who is given praise by a nursery worker, that child will start to feel more confident, they will start to feel happy, and that is therefore having an effect on their emotional development. But if that child is feeling confident, you might see that that child is also then more likely to go and interact with other children. So it's actually having an effect on those, their social development as well. Um, the interaction between those different areas can also be part of holistic development. So just to summarise, holistic development refers to all areas of development in children and also how different areas can interact and influence one another as well. Um, what we're going to be focusing on today though is the factors that affect that pattern of development. So we're looking at things that change the expected pattern of development in children. We're looking at things that have a positive effect on development. So anything that can mean that a child develops a little bit faster than usual. And we're also looking at things that have a negative impact on development. So anything that slows development down or stops children from acquiring a new skill. OK, now within that, we're going to look at two types of factors. The first type are personal factors. Personal factors are anything that a child is born with. Um, so anything that is due to their biology, anything that is due to their genetics that they've inherited from their parents is deemed to be a personal factor. Um, so take, for example, a child's height that would largely be determined by their genes and would therefore be a personal factor. Um, personal factors, however, can also um, include things that happen before a child is born while they're still developing in the womb. So anything that happens there prenatally before they're born can then have an impact on their development. And that would also be classed as a personal factor. One example of that that we'll look at in greater detail in one of the lessons over the next couple of weeks is fetal alcohol syndrome. And fetal alcohol syndrome happens when the mother consumes too much alcohol during pregnancy. And this alcohol then goes directly into the child's system um, and it affects their development then later on in life as well. So that would also be classed as a personal factor. The other type of factors that we're looking at are external factors. Now, these are anything relating to the environment, such as the child's upbringing, the social class of the child, so how much their family earns, how much money their family has, um, and any other factor, um, any other personal experience that happens to them throughout their lives, that would all be classed as an external factor. I want you to pause the video now and use your knowledge of personal and external factors to complete task one. Okay, hopefully now you've managed to complete task one. So you had a list of factors and you had to divide them into personal and external factors. So remembering that the personal factors are those that the child is born with that are determined by their genes and the external factors are anything that's coming from the child's environment. So I'm just going to run through a couple of examples of those just to make sure that you can check your own answers and make sure that you're on the right lines. Now the first one you've got is eye colour. Eye colour would be determined by a child's genetics. 
at birth and it would therefore be classed as a personal factor. Other examples of personal factors include height, cerebral palsy and learning difficulties. Love and interaction is one of the factors that you're asked to determine whether it was a personal or external factor. Love and interaction would be an example of an external factor that affects the child. So it's something that's coming from the child's environment. A safe environment would also be an example of an external factor. If you have any questions about any of the other factors that you've been asked to divide in that activity, please do comment and ask the question on show my homework and I'll make sure that I get back to you with an answer. We're going to look a little bit now in more detail at one factor in particular that affects holistic development and that factor is parenting. Now, it doesn't it won't really come as much as of a surprise that parents have a big influence on a child they spend most of their time with the child it is probably the person that the child sees and interacts with the most so during those early years between naught and five parents have a huge influence on their child's development um, now one of the main ways that children learn when they are very young is by copying others and what we're going to do today is we're going to link this to a little bit of psychology. Now, in psychology, social learning theory suggests that children learn by observing and copying the behaviour of others. So they'll identify role models in their environment. And remember that role model is someone that the child looks up to, to show them how to behave. So children will identify role models in their environment they will watch the behaviour of the role model and then they will attempt that behaviour themselves. And this is one of the main ways that children learn at a very, very young age. Take language as an example. Children will watch other people, such as their parents, in their environment talking and interacting with others and they will start to copy this. In copying it, they will begin to learn how to produce language themselves and how to communicate with other people. What I have done for today's lesson as well is included a link to a study from social learning theory that shows children imitating the behaviour of others. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about this part of psychology, you can watch the video. That is an extension task and it is entirely optional. OK, so we've looked now at how parents can have a positive impact on their child's development. They can demonstrate behaviours and the child can then copy those behaviours. But parents can also have a negative impact on their child's development. And this mainly comes when parents don't really interact with their children. Now, children learn, as we've said, language by interacting with their parents or watching their parents interact with others. If a child has no interaction with their parents, then their language development will slow down considerably. So other children will develop faster when their parents are interacting with them. But if a child's parents are not interacting with them very well, then it means that that child will not develop as quickly as others. Um, and we can use the example of Jeannie Wiley um, to support that as well. Uh, Jeannie Wiley is a case that I asked you to look at in one of the previous lessons. But just to add a little bit of context, she was raised for 13 years with very, very little interaction with anyone at all. Her parents and her brother did not communicate with Jeannie. She was left in a room and she never really saw the outside world. Now, as a result of that, when she, when she was discovered at 13 years of age, she was unable to communicate with other people. She could not produce language. And that is a clear example of how a lack of good parenting and a lack of interaction with parents has had a negative impact on a child's development. OK, so what I want you to do now 
is I want you to have a go at the questions at the end of today's activity that are on show my homework. Produce answers that are as detailed as possible. And if you've got any questions at all, leave a comment for me and I'll get back to you.